All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Gullman from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tony Martinetti, who is in Boston, Massachusetts. How are you doing, Tony? Very good, thank you. And Tony is a leadership coach, entrepreneur, idea generator, people connector, and curious adventurer. <laughs> so he brings together practical experience, formal training, and extreme curiosity to elevate leaders and equip them with tools to navigate through change. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today is not just how you navigate professional change, but also personal change. So, um, you know, let's face it, Tony, right? I mean, change is something that people struggle with both at personal and professional level. And yet, change is something that's constantly around us and if we if we ever needed a reminder i mean the last six months have told us that uh, change you know is there's so many things that are outside of our control and there are only certain things that are within our control but change is a constant as we know but it's probably a good time to start actually embracing that idea yes i, l I love that you say that because uh, it is about that embracing change and i like to take it one step further and say if you're not embracing change, um, then at least be creating change because mm -hmm. um, that's even more powerful. Um, because if you're at the forefront of that thing that's happening to you, um, then it's even more of a, a place to be in because then you can have more control over it. And it seems funny, right? Uh, and often when people come into work or a professional um, circumstance, it seems like one of the first things they do is to try and get everything set up so it, it just runs and, and there's no change, right? They hate change and they try to get everything very neatly demarked and, and processes. And yet in, in life outside, it's never like that. You can have the best laid plans and they're going to go astray. So how do, you, how do you manage to start to understand that both parts of your life you need to be constantly figuring out how to navigate the change. And as you say, how, how to anticipate change and even precipitate it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first thing is to, is to see where you're being challenged, you know, in your life and in person, mm -hmm. in your career, uh, where are those challenges showing up? Where are things not feeling like they did before? And uh, when they, they start showing up in your world, um, leaning into that with some curiosity um, asking yourself, why am I feeling this way? Why are there things that are not the way they were? And what can I um, lean into? You know, so there's uh, leaning into, but also stepping back um, right. before you um, really um, start making a change in yourself. Um, you step back and you say, okay, something's not the way it used to be. Um, and how can I do something that will um, put me in a position to um, to be in more control or affect things I do have control of. So what is it, do you have some examples maybe of, of people you've worked with, obviously not naming them, but just the situations and the the changes that they discovered and when they were, le and then how they lent into it and maybe, um, you know, embraced it and, and grew stronger as a consequence? Yeah, it's a, it's a definitely I'd love to share some uh, examples. So here's an example of, of a person who I worked with who was leading a, a team of sales executives risk mm -hmm. um, in the risk field. And um, the key thing was, you know, feeling into this element of a lot of change in the organization and not sure where they're headed. Um, and his concern was, I wanted to ensure that I was leading the team in the right direction and ensuring everyone had chances to feel as though they knew what was going on. So um, there's this, I love this, this uh, aspect of it is, is there's big arrow and then small arrows and making sure everyone's going in the same direction, but also has contr have control of a, their particular aspect of what they're doing. And so um, working with this particular individual, I helped him to understand what is his role um, in the overall organization in, her, in terms of d driving his team and connecting with his team to ensure that there was transparency around what they were going to see in this organization. You know, how could he can ensure that they knew what was happening? What were the, the bigger picture changes in the organization and how are they going to be affected? And so it started with communication and, and seeing that communication um, 
from a very transparent and vulnerable place. And that's what he was able to do. Yeah, and there's, there's a couple of interesting concepts to unpack. Um, actually, I was laughing at the beginning when you said leading a sales team in, in the risk uh, in the risk area. I think leading a sales team is always <laughs> it was always yes. is always in the risk area. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a couple of things. The first thing is uh, is the is the understanding, as you said, understanding your role, but also. I think unpacking and understanding, you know, what are the changes that are coming or what are the changes that need to happen and what needs to be embraced? Because I think sometimes you get into a panic when, when confronted with change or the need to change and then we lose sight of what it is, what the change is or what the change needs to be. Exactly. Um, you know, the, the key word here is that control and then unpacking it and, and really understanding what is the thing that's in front of me that I can uh, take one step towards? And then once that's done, what's the next thing after that? Because if you try to be um, looking at it from too big of a picture and saying, whoa, this is a lot to handle right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. Then you, you start to panic. And I will yeah. point out one thing about uncertainty. Uncertainty is good in quantities, small quantities. Mm -hmm. um, this is, you know, this is why we have visions and goals that we set. If you knew it was going to happen around the corner, why would you try hard to, to achieve it? You need to yeah. have some, some sense that the outcome is uncertain so that you can strive for it. Um, when you have that uncertainty and it's something that's achievable, then that's really powerful. If it's something that is so, um, so uncertain that it's overwhelming, mm -hmm. then it becomes... Um, really hard to handle. So you, if you can take it into bite-sized pieces, um, then you can start to to make things happen, and that's where yeah, that I, comes from. Yeah, no, I, I love that. But it's also, and the also the other part you mentioned there was the transparency piece, and I think this is where, mm -hmm. if you take, um, you know, what's happened recently with the pandemic and all the economic impact and and, and businesses, different businesses being impacted in different ways. I think what people crave is some level of transparency even if they even if the news isn't that great they just want to as you say they want to be communicated with they want some transparency they want to at least know the lay of the land and sort of get an idea of how the organization is going to going to react to it so as you said i mean as a as a leader they're embrace it, you people aren't going to come and embrace the change even if the change isn't that great unless they really understand the reasons for it and what the real situation is yeah yeah i mean that's that's how um inspiration which is something that i'm always talking about it's really important you want to make sure you inspire people into um into why they this change is good or why there's an mm -hmm. element for opportunity in what's happening right now and that's where a leader can really become a, a key part of driving things forward. Um, it's not for having people following you just because of a title. It's because you're able to rally them around a cause that is more powerful than you alone. It's about more than one person. And um, even in, in uncertain times, um, when you can get them to be excited about leaning forward in, this, in the face of uncertainty, it's really amazing. Um, so I think that's something that I'm always talking about is what can you control and what also can you drive people forward into, even the, in the unknown, to get excited about an unknown vision, an unknown, unknown um, future. And if you think about it, I mean, it's a, as we said, it's a classic example right now of where you can inspire creative change because maybe you're in a business that's been heavily impacted um, by the virus and the economic shutdown. So you have to start looking at maybe reconfiguring your products or services or moving into maybe adjacent markets or doing something a little different right now to get you through that period. And in order to have the best ideas, you have to get everybody rallied around the idea of some creative change, right? Yeah. 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 And I, I love that you, you went there because it's, this is something that's really important. There's, that creativity is something that's important to drive for the future. And if you're too paralyzed by fear or uncertainty, mm -hmm. then you can't start making steps. Um, and it's not about being perfect. It's about being willing to just take a step and see what we can lean into. Um, yeah. I love that concept. 
Yeah, and I think um, part of it too, if you if you look at the personal and the professional, right? I mean, this is a time when, you know, maybe your your personal life maybe has gone under some changes. Maybe you're working at home for the first time. Maybe you're not working as much. Maybe there's all these other things going on in your life. But you can, again, you could approach that as, you know, being panicking and be paralyzed. But it, Or you could look at it as a chance to take stock and maybe reconfigure your life going forward. Yeah. I love that. There's one thing that I, uh, I've been playing around with, and this is a, it's a bit of a paradox, but I'll, I'll put it out there. And there's an element of, for, from a personal standpoint, is to, is to set routines and stick to routines. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, lean into novelty. Do yeah. something new that um, triggers you to, to create something different in your life. Um, so that you are feeling as though, yeah, these are challenging times, but I'm learning something new. Um, I'm figuring out something new about myself. And um, what are the things that I want to take out of this period that I'm learning about myself that I want to take forward? Um, Yeah, and and it's funny. I mean, you look at even some of the simple things like uh, maybe people who are working from home for the first time and they're suddenly discovering. I actually, to be honest, I was talking to somebody last night and uh, she's working at home or has been working at home for the first time and so energized by the whole experience because of the not commuting, not wasting all that time traveling, not being in a rush in the morning to get out and to jump in the car and get to work, not being in a rush home in the evening and then having to run around, having everything much more um, manageable and calm. She feels way more productive and far, far happier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that's really amazing to hear from people. I mean, there's also flip sides of that, sure. um, you know, not being in physical contact with people mm-hmm. um, is, is definitely something people are missing. And that Zoom fatigue that is real, uh, people being mm-hmm. on Zoom meetings far too sure. much. Um, but that's where the but, creat- but they're probably the same people who are uh, who are complaining about being in too many meetings you know, physical meetings like a, you know six months ago yeah you can't satisfy everybody right <laughs> you're absolutely right but I think there's um that's the element of like you know, really kind of seeing okay well you know how can I um, change that so that it, it, mm-hmm. it works to my advantage and you know okay well you don't need to be on a zoom call every five minutes you can sure. think about ways to change it to a phone call and Maybe even get out in nature and have a phone yeah, call. Exa- yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so many ways. And maybe, and the other thing is maybe, and I think this is a, this is such a, because you talk, obviously talk and, and coach about change, but I think this is such a great opportunity. It's uh, for people to really look for organizations and individuals. Like from an individual point of view, really ask yourself, what quality of life do I want? What kind of working environment do I want? How do I actually want to configure my life as opposed to being, well, this is the way it has to be. I mean, now we've seen that it doesn't have to be in a particular way for a lot of, not for everyone, for a lot of, um, for a lot of jobs. And from an organization point of view, it's a great opportunity to go, well, maybe, maybe dragging everybody into the into an office every day isn't the smartest way to operate maybe having uh, your pool of talent only within a certain radius of your isn't the smartest way to go so i think there's so many great opportunities for people to to brainstorm and learn lessons and see whether there are there are things that you want to go back to doing but there are other things that you want to change going forward yeah yeah i mean it's really it's become the great disruptor right and mm. um you know, trying to see the positives out of a bad situation, but um, to see it as a disruptor of how we used to think and how we used to be. But what are the things that are positive about this? Well, you know, we're able to find ways to get things to our house and delivered in a way that we never thought would be possible. Um, We're, you know, creating solutions that um, are truly amazing um, that I hope we do keep um, long Mm -hmm. past uh, this this, um, epidemic. So what is um? So how do you ha- when you talk to people? How do you help people? Not just like, uh, especially in a situation like that. Not just like say, oh, this is great, but can we just want to get back to the way things were and just want to get back to everything just being the way things were? And the reality is that's not going to happen. I mean, it may happen in some businesses. Maybe it'll happen eighty percent. In other businesses, maybe it'll be fifteen percent. But there's there's definitely going to be a percentage that isn't going to go back to the way it was. So how do you help people? Um, embrace this as a, as regard um, um, as opposed to feeling that it's some kind of loss. 
Yeah. Um, well, that's a good question. And the, and the thing is, from a business perspective, from a leader perspective, you know, it's really re, reshifting, well, shifting how they think about their next steps mm-hmm. and having, um, holding that vision with a, um, holding the vision tightly, but um, not necessarily having um, a firm grasp on the outcome. And what I mean by that is that there's a, a different way of getting there. And there's going to be some risk adjustments to how that happens, but having a vision of what you still want to create. So you have a North star. Um, mm-hmm. So there's an element of um, we're still the kind of company that's going to do X, Y, and Z. And this is what we hope for, but the way we're going to get there is different. We're taking a different route. Yeah. Um, and there's certain risks that we have to, to now plan for that. It may not be um, the way we originally planned. Yeah, and I like that idea. Is, um, the idea of um, if you focus on the outcome, uh, then you, as I said, I mean, then you have the option to plot different routes to getting there, as opposed to say, as opposed to rather looking at the route you're on and saying, you know, well, we've got to figure out how we can stay on this road despite everything. It's better mm-hmm. to look at, okay, there's the destination. And maybe, as I said, maybe you have to detour just a couple of miles. Maybe I have to blast a tunnel through a mountain. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if that, if that's, if that ends up being the best course of action mm-hmm. based on, um, on what, you know, people are seeing, then that might be just it. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. It? Well, listen, this is great, uh, Tony. Um, before we finish, do you have any other last bits of uh, advice for people and how to, how to embrace and navigate change? Yeah. I mean, the, the one that I always come back to is um, it's that getting uncomfortable. If it feels uncomfortable, mm-hmm then there's a sign that that's telling you, um, right. That's growth. Um, when you're out doing things that are feeling unnatural or feeling a little bit out your, of your zone, then lean into that and get curious because Mm -hmm. that might be something that you need to do more of. Um, so yeah. Okay. That's fantastic. It's for companies. Well, yeah, so this is uh, that's fantastic. So listen, Tony, this has been great, great advice. All of Tony's information is going to be in his contributor bio below this. But before we go, Tony, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I love working with, um, with people who are really doing amazing things in the world and helping them to see through um, their challenges. And I'm looking forward to um, really connecting with folks. Um, if they feel they want to reach out, I'm happy to uh, have a conversation. So um, thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, this is great. Listen, thanks very much, Tony Martinetti. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.